Hi everyone, it's me, Bill, KC3RYS. I've seen a lot of people online asking questions about how Chirp works or what to use Chirp for. In one of my other videos, I went into it, but I had a lot of other things in there as well. So I figured I would do a video today showing you how Chirp works as well as explaining the importance of using it. So let's get into it. Before we get into it though, in my last video, I showed how to build a inexpensive repeater using a couple of Baofeng radios and a, a little device in between. And I want to tell you, I got a lot of great feedback on that. And I wanted to thank everyone who took the time to watch the video and put a comment down or to contact me through Facebook. I really appreciate all that feedback. It was very helpful. And I'm going to do a follow-up to that video very soon. I want to show you the things that I learned and I want to show you how well the repeater worked or how well it did not work. So anyhow, let's get into looking at Chirp. Chirp is a piece of software that allows you to program your radios. A lot of people are asking what's the importance of doing that when I could just type in the frequency. Well, there's a couple advantages to it. For one, you don't want to have to type in a different frequency every time you want to use your radio. Two, for things like repeaters, you may want to have two frequencies on one channel one of those frequencies you transmit on and the other you receive on. And you don't want to have to redo that every time you want to use your radio. You can select various channels and each one of those channels can have a frequency assigned to it. And you can also then scroll through those channels or even scan those channels. The UV5R and its variants are not very good at scanning. They take a little bit of time. By eliminating all of the frequencies in between, you'll get a much faster scan. And by setting up channels, you can go quickly to the exact frequency or channel that you want to use. And you can have your associates jump to those channels as well very easily. So let's take a look at what we can do with Chirp. So in order to start, I'm going to take one of my UV5Rs, which I have completely factory reset. She's back to Chinese. And I'll take my programming cord. And I'll have affiliate links down at the bottom for both the radio and for the cords. And of course, if you select those links, I can get a small commission out of that. And it does help my channel. I appreciate it. Thanks. So let's plug it all in and see what we got here. First things first, and this is a mistake that a lot of folks run into. When you plug your wire into your radio, your UV5R especially, make sure when you get it in there, I always tell people, hold the radio with two hands, put both thumbs on the plug, and really give it a push. For whatever reason, it can look like it's all the way in there, but if it's not all the way in, you will get an error message when you try using Chirp. So two hands, two thumbs, and then the other end, the USB, will plug into the computer. Okay, so here's the Chirp window. We're gonna come up to radio, download from radio. We'll select our port. This is the port I've used in the past, so I'm going to hope that it's still a good one. Our vendor for this is Baofeng, but you can see there are other vendors available. And of course the model will go with the mighty UV5R, but as you can see, there's a number of other models available from Baofeng. When we're ready, we'll hit okay, and we'll get a little window here, prompting us to turn the radio off, then connect the cable, make sure that it's firmly connected. Again, two hands, two thumbs, then turn the radio on, and it may need to go to 100%. I've always had good luck with mine at halfway up. Ensure it's tuned to a channel with no activity, obviously. Good idea. And then hit OK to download the image from the device. So what this is doing now is taking whatever information is on the radio, which may have been programmed in China and come here, and downloading it into Chirp. So in just a few seconds, the window will refresh and we'll see whatever was on the radio to begin with. Okay, you can see there's one channel. It's set at channel zero, and it's uh, probably a test one that they use in the factory. So I'm just gonna select edit and delete that. Now this is very important. You wanna save this somewhere because this is your original image file, and you may need to use this as a recovery later. I'm just going to drop it right here on my desktop. Now, if ever I need to go back and resurrect this radio, I can go back to that file. As a result, I'm also going to save this as a test file. 
This way, if I make changes to this particular file we're looking at right now, it won't make those same changes to the original image file. So on my desktop right now, I've got this Baofeng UV5R underscore test image. And I also have the image I downloaded, which had the long number in there, serial number. So now that I have a blank image file, what can I do with it? I'm going to come over here to Safari and in repeater book, I'm going to search for repeaters in my area. So I'll come down here to Northwest repeaters in the left-hand navigation, select that. Then from the resulting window, I'll select proximity search. And right here is my location. I'll enter my location, but I'm going to scroll it off the window so everyone doesn't need to know exactly where I live. Okay, the distance, I know that I have quite a number of repeaters in my area. So I'm going to cut my distance down to 15 miles. I can select on a couple different bands. So I'm going to select on the 2 meter band and the 70 centimeter band. That's UHF and VHF, and that's what I know my UV5R can use. Call sign, I'm not searching for any particular repeater, so I'll leave that blank. My mode is going to be FM. I'm not going to worry about any other features, but I will say anything that's confirmed on air and is an open repeater, meaning anyone can use the repeater. And then I will sort by distance. You can see I can sort by location, frequency, call sign, last update it, but I want to get the ones that are closest to me first. I'll hit search. And here are my results. You can see I got quite a number in my local area. I've got them in repeater book, but I want them in chirp. So what I can do is come up here to this menu and select export, export to chirp. Memory name one, it's going to default to my call sign. Memory name two, I can leave it blank or I can say frequency, whatever I want to use. I'm just going to leave it as none. Sort order, I want to sort it by distance and sort order two in case I have two repeaters the same distance away. I can then sort also by call sign. I agree and download. Now one of the things about repeaterbook.com is they want you to have an account and you can set up your account for free. It's very easy, it only takes a few minutes. So I hope you saw that it downloaded, went into my downloads folder. So I'm going to say open and I'll navigate to my downloads. I'll select my chirp CSV. All right, and here you see, these are all the repeaters that were in repeater book. They're now in my chirp file, but notice that this file is a CSV. I need it to be an I. MG. So what I'll do is I'll highlight row one and come down here to row 25, hit my shift key and select. And now you can see I've got all 25 rows selected. I'll go up to edit and copy. And then I'll leave my CSV file and come in here to my image file. Select row one, select edit and paste. Now all 25 of those repeaters are in an IMG file and are ready to be uploaded into my radio. Before I do it, I'll come up and save it. Okay, so it's saved. Now I want to take a look at something else. Here in the middle of the page you can see memories. Memories are what we're looking at right now and settings. I want to like look at my settings. There's several different settings in here, basic, advanced, other. There's a couple things in here that I think you should pay attention to. You should have a look at it. First item here is display mode A. This is when you look at the screen and you're looking at repeater on channel number one, your A line, do you want to see the frequency? Do you want to see the channel or do you want to see the name? I want to see the name because I want to see what is the name of the repeater. On display mode B, I'm going to leave that at frequency. So that way if I put both A and B on channel 1, I can see that channel 1 
repeater name is ABC123. And on the B line, I'll see the frequency is 144XYZ. I'll show you when we get back to the radio. Under the advanced settings, one of the things you want to look at is voice. As lovely as the Chinese voice sounds, I don't speak Chinese, so I'm going to switch this over to English. I want to make sure that my broadcast FM is checked so I can listen to FM if I need to. And these other settings I'll let you look at on your own. Under other settings, I want to focus on my power on message one and power on message two. This is literally, when you turn on the radio, what it will say to you. So I like to put my call sign and I'll put my name down here. Under work mode settings, I'm not going to make any changes. DTMF settings, same. Under service settings, this is a little bit more advanced, but have a look at this on your radio. The Baofangs, when they are delivered, don't have very good squelch settings. I can't remember what they are uh, when they're first set up, but on my radio, I've switched them out to these numbers here. With VHF squelch zero is literally zero. Squelch number one, I changed it to two, and then I go 20, 30, 50, 65, 75, 85, 95, 105. This gives me a lot better control over squelch than I think Balfang gives me when it's first delivered to me. These are settings you might want to look at on your own. I'll go back up to memories, and now I'm ready to upload it back into the radio. Oh, let's save it one more time just to be safe. One other thing you might want to look at. In addition to the repeaters, there are other settings available to you in Chirp. You can go to File, Open Stock Configuration, and you can see you can set up the NOAA weather alert stations. I like to have those on my radio, so this is how easy that is to do. Chirp has opened up another tab, and here are the weather stations. These are national if you're in the US. I'll select all of those, copy, come back into my test image, come back down here, row 27, and hit paste. And now you can see I've got the weather stations programmed. So just to have another look, up here, file, and then open stock configuration. In addition to weather, there's a number of other things. You can set up the marine VHF channels, FRS and GMRS channels, MERS channels, US marine VHF channels. You can program all these into your radio, but keep in mind you cannot transmit on these frequencies using your UV5R. So now I'm ready to upload back to my radio. I have the same settings that I use to download, and when we're ready, I'll hit OK. And you can see now it's cloning to the radio. Once it's done, the radio will restart, and we'll have a look at it when we're done. So now it's time to check how we did. Here's our radio, and let me just try turning it on there in front of the camera. So you see, it's back to English. It showed you my call sign and my name. And when we switch over to channel mode, Top row is showing you the name of the repeater, and the bottom row is showing you the frequency of the repeater. That's our quick tutorial for Chirp. I hope it helps. If you have questions, please leave them down below. And as always, thank you for watching. I really appreciate you watching. Good luck and have fun.